All right, guys, so we're about to begin the 2029-2030 season. This is how the lines are going to look heading into this year. We've got Iserman playing with Smith and Bordalo, Musty playing with Martin and Eklund, Wazelin playing with Goyette and Kako, and Anderson playing with Howe and Delandria. A couple forwards that we did re-sign, Tanner Howe is one of them, a one-year deal at $1.07 million. Definitely took a little bit of a pay cut to stay here, and it's appreciated. Brady Martin is another guy, a two-year deal at $3.5 million. Pretty solid, 88 overall. Thought he was going to demand a ton more money. But, I mean, we were a little bit tighter to the cap since we are getting better now. So, I mean, it was a pretty solid deal for us and for him. Mikey Anderson playing with Levshinov on D. Spence playing with Mackenzie Wieger. Mackenzie Wieger is a new addition to this team. I'll take you through how we just got him. All right, guys, we are here in the offseason. We are looking for a left defenseman just because we lost Jacob Slavin this summer. Mackenzie Wieger is right-handed but can play the left side. He's got two more years left on this deal at $5.4 million. He's 35 years old. Thought he can definitely play first pairing or second pairing minutes. Looking to ship out Thomas Hurdle. He's still an 86 overall. Has not produced offensively like I've hoped in this franchise mode. We do have a lot of centers already, so I thought it's time to let go of him. Going to add a third-round pick to it, too, just to... Kind of for taking on that extra two and a half million dollars in salary. Going to see if this trade goes through. Trade's accepted. So we just traded a hurdle and a third for Mackenzie Wieger. And then the third pair, we got Riker Evans playing with Vladislav Gavrikov. Gavrikov was our only unrestricted free agency signing this offseason. A two-year deal at five and a half million. Honestly, I just kind of wanted Lion Bichelle to not be in the lineup anymore. I don't mind having him as a seventh D. I'm probably going to be looking to trade him. He hasn't really had a solid career so far in San Jose. Career high 14 points in the NHL. He had 3 and 82, 14 and 82, and 6 and 82. Thought he was going to be a little bit more offensive. I know he's a big guy at 6 foot 5, 237 pounds, but I do expect a little bit more from him. The other scratch is Artem Guriev. And then in net, we've got Askarov, who's back with Scott Ratzlaff. Both these guys were re signed this summer. Ratzlaff, a one year deal at $1 million. And Askarov demanded a lot, but I mean, we would have had to replace him if not. Seven-year deal at $9.95 million. This He finally got us into the playoffs. He won a round. I think he deserves his contract. He had 40 wins last year with a 9-10. He could have been up there in Vesna conversation. The cap's over $100 million now, so I mean, him even making 9.975 isn't too much if you ask me. All right, guys, so we're 30 games into the season. We do have 30 points with a record of 14, 14, and 2. We're in that second wild card spot, one point behind the Anaheim Ducks. We do have a game in hand, though. We're only 10 points back of first place, and, I mean, we do have three games in hand. We definitely can't catch them, but we can gain some ground. I don't know if you remember last season, we were sitting at this point, we had 29 points, and we ended up coming in first in the division. So I'm hoping that this is just another slow start when we can get things going because we do have a really talented team. So taking a look at leading scores at the 30 game mark, Will Smith's got 27, Iserman 25, Eklund and Bordalo and Goyette have got 24, Martin's got 20 along with Levshinov, Musty has got 15, so does Evans, Kako, Howe have 10, Delandria, Wazelin have 9, Spence has 7, uyghur has got 5 along with Mikey Anderson, Josh Anderson's only got 4, same with Gavrikov, that's pretty disappointing from Josh Anderson, he had a solid season last year. In net, Askarov's 12-11-1 with a 9-0-1, and R Scott Ratzlav is 2-3-1 with a 9-12, so goaltending's been pretty good for the most part. I'm sure Askarov's stats can go up. It was a little bit of a slow start for him, I think, but definitely not horrible. Ilya Sorokin's got the most wins in the NHL with 19 on the Carolina Hurricanes. Then Vasilevsky and Jake Ottinger are tied for second. Can't believe Vasilevsky signed with the Florida Panthers, Tampa's rival. That's pretty funny. He's now 35 years old, probably got a couple seasons left before he retires. Really storied career, though, from Andre Vasilevsky. Samsonov's got a 927 through 20 games. That's pretty good. Dostel's got a 923. Ottinger a 920. So, I mean, some really good goaltending this season. For all skaters, Jack Quinn's currently leading the NHL in points 47. Point and Tage Thompson have got 44. Coolidge 43. Fantilli 41. Connor, Miller, and Hughes have 40. Pasternak 39. Connor Bedard, 37, along with Mitchkov. All right, guys, so we are here at the trade deadline. Decided to not make any moves just because we're near that wild card spot. Hopefully the team can pick it up this last third of the season. We're 30-26-6 and six with 66 points. Good for that second wild card spot. Two points back of the Edmonton Oilers for the first wild card spot. And nine points back of first place of the Vancouver Canucks. 
So taking a look at scoring on the San Jose Sharks, no one is even close to a point per game right now. Smith's at 51 points, Iserman 50, Martin 49, Eklund and Levshinov 47, Bordalo 44, Goyette 40, Musty 35, Evans 26, Kako 20, Howe 18, same with Spence, wazlin has got 16, Delandria 15, Gavrikov 10, Anderson 9, Mikey Anderson 8, Josh Anderson was the first one, Mackenzie Wieger's at 7, so I mean a couple guys that I expected a lot more of, not really producing offensively, like I said, Askarov, I knew he was going to pick it up, 25, 21, and 3, 909 save percentage, Ratzlav is 5, 5, and 3 with a 909 save percentage, so he's been a pretty solid backup ever since Yaroslav Askarov has gotten into the picture, Andre Vasilevsky and Ilya Sorokin are leading the league in wins with 36. Vasilevsky's got a 917 save percentage. He might be looking at the Vezina Trophy this year. Seems like that's the best out of starting goalie. So, I mean, if he continues this for the last little part of the season, he will be looking at another Vezina Trophy. We'll take a look at all skaters. Braden Point is now leading the league in points. It was Jack Quinn at the 30-game mark. Point's got 90 and 61. Fantilli's got 85. Quinn, 82, along with Connor Bedard. Tage Thompson, 80. Matthew, 78. Jack Hughes and JT Miller have got 76. Yuri Kulich, 75. And David Pasternak's got 73. All right, guys, so the 2029-30 season is complete. As you can see, pretty disappointing season after making the second round of the playoffs last year. Finished with 82 points in 82 games. Six in the Pacific Division with a record of 38, 38, and six. Missed the playoffs by five points to the Vancouver Canucks, who got that first wild card spot. So taking a look at scoring on the San Jose Sharks, Cole Eiserman led the way with 71. Smith had 69. Martin 62. Eklund 60. Levshinov 58. Bordalo 57. Goyette 50. Musty 45. Evans 33. Spence 28. Waslin 27. Kako 27, Howe 22, Delandria 21, Josh Anderson 15, Mackenzie Wieger 14, Vladislav Gavrikov 13, and Mikey Anderson finished with 11. In accordance to goaltending, I mean, goalies are pretty solid. Askarov 33, 30, and 3, two shutouts and a 907 save percentage. Scott Ratzlaff went 5, 9, and 3 with a 900. I mean, his stats maybe went a little bit down near the end of the year. I think we're still going to re-sign him at 25 years old, though, but we'll see what else is out there for backup goaltenders. Andre Vasilevsky led the league in wins with 45 wins, 917 save percentage, and I mean, that's going to be good enough for the Vezina Trophy, especially playing 72 games. I'd be really surprised if, like, Stuart Skinner or Jeremy Swayman ended up getting it over him. And looking at scoring around the league, it was Point who ended up winning the Art Ross Trophy with 113 points. Rantanen had 110. Jack Quinn had 107, Fantilli 104, Tage Thompson and Makar 103, McKinnon 101, Michkov and Jack Hughes 99, along with Dreisaitl and JT Miller, then Austin Matthews finished with 98. So taking a look at the playoff tree this year, the Dallas Stars have won the Stanley Cup, defeating the Buffalo Sabres in six games. They were able to get through Vegas in the first round in six, swept the Oilers in the second round, beat the Canucks in five in the conference finals, and then winning in six in the Stanley Cup versus Buffalo. Buffalo beat Carolina in the first round in six, Pittsburgh in the second round in six, the Habs in the conference finals in five, and then falling short in six in the Stanley Cup to the Dallas Stars. So taking a look at playoff scoring, it looks like Wyatt Johnson might be looking at the playoff MVP with 33 points. Tage Thompson had 28, Stan Coven 27, Jason Robertson 24, Manji Apani 23, Quinn Hughes 21, Yuri Kulich 20, Lekker Amaki 19, Alex Tuck 17, along with Zane Perica and Antonio Stranges and Jack Quinn. So we had a four-way tie for 17 points. And Atu Ratu had 16 points. Taking a look at goaltenders, Akira Schmid's now on the Dallas Stars. He's up to an 86 overall at 30 years old. He had a 914 save percentage in these playoffs, really solid. And so was Devon Levi. He was 14-5-4 with a 917 save percentage for the Buffalo Sabres. So taking a look at the 2030 League Awards, the Cup goes to Dallas, the President's Trophy to Florida, the Clarence Campbell Bowl to Dallas, the Prince of Wales to the Buffalo Sabres, individual awards, the Art Ross goes to Braden Point, the Hart goes to Jack Quinn, the Norris goes to Kale McCarr, the Lady Bing goes to Point, the Calder goes to Ramsey on the New York Islanders, the Conn Smythe goes to Wyatt Johnson, the Vesna goes to Vasilevsky, the Jennings also goes to Vasilevsky, the Bill Masterton goes to Will Borgen, the 
Jack Adams goes to Vegas' coach, the Selkie goes to McDavid, the Ted Lindsay goes to Jack Quinn, and the Maurice Rocket Richard goes to Adam Fantilli for the second straight season. Thank you very much for watching this video, San Jose Sharks Franchise Mode Season 7. We had a really good season in Season 6, able to make the second round, falling a little bit short of playoffs in this one, five points. Definitely going to have to make some changes in the offseason, as guys that I thought were going to perform more offensively definitely didn't. Didn't even have a guy close to a point per game, so that's something we're definitely going to have to address as well. If you haven't had the chance to check out any of my content, please go back and do so. I'd appreciate if you like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you won't miss another episode.